You're listening to Hockey to Heroin, the road to recovery on the Hockey Podcast Network. New episodes Wednesdays and Saturdays. Follow Hockey to Heroin on Twitter. That's at Hockey, the number two heroin for updates and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. Brady Leavitt, like any other Canadian kid, his dream was to play in the National Hockey League. Success came easily to Leopold as he began to turn heads in the junior leagues. Only pass from Long, he's got Leopold with him. Long walks in, centers, goal! Leopold's a right hand shot, rotates, and then sends it along back to Leopold. And here we go, right off the bat, a fight ensues, and it's Leopold and Kerr, and they're both getting in shots. Now Leopold throwing right after right and just connecting like crazy. Once I met heroin, I mean, it was just, that became my new passion. What's the reason that young people who are athletes get addicted to heroin? They injure themselves, and they're more likely to be prescribed an opioid. And once addicted, many are going to switch over to heroin because it's much more cost effective. And the effects that they produce in the brain are indistinguishable. When we talk about painkillers, we're essentially talking about heroin pills. Welcome back to another edition of Hockey to Heroin, the road to recovery. Guys, this is episode number 32. Looking forward to this one. That's the same number as my guest. Uh, I will say it right now. Riley Cote joining me again. He is the first person to join me twice on Hockey to Heroin, the road to recovery. And I thought it was important to get Riley back on here right away because there was a lot that we dove into episode 31 um, of course, his hockey career is one thing, guys, but what he's doing now with his approach to healing, I thought it was important to go back and uh, focus solely a whole episode on healing because, listen, yeah, hockey to heroin, that's where I went from, but guess what? I'm on the road to recovery, and this is going to be part of my recovery, and I really, really look to Riley. Um, he's so smart. He's done so much work, and he's really been leading the charge for the last decade um, so we're going to touch base today and dive in to some of the healing properties that come from the plant medicines and the holistic approach i'm looking forward to that but guys if you're listening i hope you're listening on the hockey podcast network you guys can check them out the hockey podcast network dot com or anywhere on social media at hockey podnet guys they have something like 40 different podcasts uh, one for every NHL team. Doesn't matter what market you live in. We have a podcast with your favorite team. Um, not to mention bonus content like Hockey Air and the Road to Recovery, uh, as well as Ice Analytics, House of Hockey, and of course Tales with TR, a hockey podcast. My boy Terry Ryan's podcast. Check it out, guys, at Hockey Podnet or the Hockey Podcast Network dot com. Unfortunately, guys, um, for now the fifth or sixth episode in a row, I am not. I am not recording in the Matthew Lachinsky Memorial Studio, but that will change very soon. My new trusty friend, Matt Thompson, is coming back down in about a week, uh, maybe 10 days to finish the Matthew Lachinsky Memorial Studio. And if you are a first-time listener, um, I will tell you a little bit about Matthew Lachinsky. Um, and if you're not a first-time listener, you know who Matthew Lachinsky is, and you will continue to hear about him. Uh, Matthew Lashinsky wasn't a friend of mine, uh, though he probably would have been. Uh, Matthew Lashinsky was drafted by the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds in 2002. In the Bantam draft, he broke into the OHL uh, as a 17-year-old year and played parts of two seasons with the Sioux. Um, he battled some things off the ice, uh, much like myself, mental health and addiction. Uh, his hockey career, unfortunately, never panned out um, due to some off-ice issues. Um, and we lost Matthew Lashinsky in 2017 to an overdose. Um, and really, there is no real reason why he's gone and I'm not. Um, as soon as I heard this story, I was like, the studio that I was building, I was like, guess what? We're doing it in his honor. And we'll never, ever, ever forget about Matthew Lashinsky uh, or any of our fallen brothers or sisters. Um, so, Matty, if you're looking down, guess what? Uh, your boy Matt 
he's coming down and we're going to get this done, buddy. And uh, we're going to be recording all the episodes uh, for years and years and years to come. So your name will never be forgotten. Uh, Matthew Lyshinsky, Skating with Angels, buddy. Rest in peace. Um, Guys, that brings me into, uh, you know, what my main focus is right now. And that's the Puck Support Foundation, guys. um, I quickly play... Uh, In case you're a first-time listener, here is our mission statement. Even though every child who plays hockey dreams of one day making the NHL, winning a Stanley Cup and making millions of dollars, the fact is that very few of them do. Some end up with serious mental health and addiction issues, often long after the cheering stops and their safety net has vanished. The Puck Support Foundation is a non-profit charity that is committed to providing relief for any player or coach, active or retired, who is struggling with these issues. We try to do that by providing a safe platform for hockey players to receive the help they need, confidentially and without fear of judgment. We intend to do that by working with mental health and addiction professionals to find and provide our brothers and sisters with the best prevention and treatment methods, and by providing a toll-free line that can be used by anyone, anytime, anywhere. Let's get ready to talk about it. That's Steve Buckley from Beaverton, Oregon, the voiceover work. Once again, thank you to Steve. Uh, such a great voice. And thanks to Ken Campbell, senior writer of the Hockey News, for uh, revamping my written version uh, of our vision statement. So thank you to Ken. He really did such a great job um, recapturing uh, what I had written. Uh, he really made it a lot better. So thank you, Ken. Um, the Puck Support Foundation, guys, is going to be there for any hockey player or coach. If you're in the hockey community and you're suffering with mental health addiction or you need a job after hockey, there's so many different things that we all struggle with. Well, guess what? We will find a way to help any hockey player or coach. If you're part of the hockey community and you need help of any way, we will find a way to help you. We will obviously dial in and get things uh, organized 100% like we're in the middle of incorporating our nonprofit. Uh, and I got some big, big news that I get to announce. So check this, guys. Uh, I'm really excited. This is some beautiful work by my best friend, Michael Hangen, Chief Executive Director of the Puck Support Foundation. Um, April 19th to the 30th, 2021, at the Sutsina Nation in Alberta, the world's longest hockey game through the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, They're doing it once again. I'm going to just read this. Um, There is a press conference tomorrow July the 9th, 2020, Sutsina Nation, Alberta. From April 19th to the 30th, 2021, 40 hockey players from across Canada will embark on a 12-day journey to raise awareness for Indigenous reconciliation, raise funds for charity, and set a new Guinness World Record. The world's longest hockey game is slated for 262 consecutive hours at the state-of-the-art Seven Chiefs Sportsplex at the Sutsina Nation, looking to become the third Calgary area event to set the Guinness World Record in the past decade. The two previous events in 2012 and 2014 raised $3.4 million for local and national charities alike. And the 2021 world's longest hockey game will look to beat the current world record of 251 hours, 7 minutes, and 58 seconds that was set in Strathcona County outside Edmonton in 2018. Guess what? The Puck Support Foundation is headlining this event along with Kids Sports. So we are so thrilled, so excited. Thank you to the world's longest hockey game. Thank you to Mike Hangin for putting in the work. And thank you to his old billet, Leslie, from LP Events, who is working closely with us, who is doing such a great job for us. Thank you, Leslie. Um, for helping us get involved in this. This is so exciting. I cannot wait to get out to Alberta, April 2021 with the Puck Support crew, guys. Um, we'll keep you up to date. Wacy Rabbit is our guy. Uh, Wacy Rabbit, WHL alumni, uh, professional hockey player, indigenous um, young man, and he will be um, our main ambassador uh, for that event. So shout outs to my boy, Wacy Rabbit, who is one hell of a hockey player drafted by the Boston Bruins back 
in 2004. So guys, we're looking forward to that. And of course, if you're struggling, guys, reach out to somebody, if not to me, to somebody else. Uh, we will have our website, pucksupport.com, up and running in the next week or two. And hopefully that 1-800 number will be up and going soon as well. So uh, the last thing I want to say, guys, I want to give a big shout out to Mark and Janet Hollick. Uh, I am using a new condenser microphone. So if I sound a little more clear today, um, that is because of Mark and Janet Hollick. Um, actually, I've been using a mic that my dad bought for me, but with my new setup with the Rodecaster, it doesn't plug in. Uh, it's a USB mic, which is good for on the road. Uh, but I needed a new mic um, that plugs into my Rodecaster. So thank you to Mark and Janet Hollick because I really didn't have the money to buy one. Um, so thank you so, so much. I truly, truly appreciate it. And thanks again um, to my dad, Brian, for helping me out with just absolutely everything. Dad, I love you so much. I'm really looking forward to having you on this uh, podcast episode 50, September the 9th. <laughs> Not that I'm counting. Uh, anyways, guys, um, thank you to the Holics uh, and to my dad, of course, for all the continued support. I really, truly love you. Um, and to everybody, thank you so much for all the support. This I'd have nothing without you guys, really. Um, without the listeners, without the support, without the encouragement, I'm really in the same spot I was about four or five months ago. So, guys, thank you so much. Um, I do have a mental health appointment tomorrow too, um, which I'm looking forward to, like an actual psych con consultation. It's supposed to be October. They got me in early. There's the cancellation. They called me. Guess what? Get to see a doctor tomorrow. Get your mind checked. If you're struggling, guys, it's okay to get help. Anyways, guys, let's get into the episode. And before we do, guys, and of course, this episode is proudly brought to you by Team Issue Limited. Team Issue is connecting all walks of life. Team Issue does this by recreating that special feeling of being part of something bigger. A community for all striving towards the same goal. Guys, check it out. Teamissue.ca. Use promo code TOEDRAG15 to get 15% off your total purchase. They have unbelievable clothes they're active wear as much like lululemon they got jogging suits uh jogging pants whatever uh active wear tank tops t-shirts snapback hats dad hats kids clothes check it out guys teamissue.ca that is a whl alumni former teammate of mine jesse paradise's company shout outs to him in winnipeg manitoba um so without further ado let's get right into this episode before we do i want to play this one clip for you just kill physical pain, they kill mental pain. Take away your ability to feel, your emotion. And I mean, I think a lot of this is, is, is where depression begins. I mean, when you start numbing your thoughts and your feelings, you're not, you're not who you are. You're not, you know, you're not mentally healthy. I understand there's a time and a place for painkillers, don't get me wrong, but they're definitely abuse. They're definitely overprescribed. They're definitely mainstream street corners on the black as, market. As a role player, you know, you're, again, your identity is this, this enforcer that's supposed to go take care of business, but when you're not in the lineup all the time and you're in, you know, you're in and out and you know, you use just kind of as a piece of meat, I kind of started seeing that and I started losing respect for what I was doing. So when I retired in 2011 at the age of 28, I made a decision that I was going to be accountable for the hole that I got myself into. Um, I'd already had a relationship with mushrooms again since I was 15. I ate them quite a bit. Um, but again, very unintentionally. And then it all kind of clicked when I retired and embarked on this quest of holism is that, is that these were always medicines and I was always somewhat you know, self-medicating with them, but I didn't really understand it at all. Originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba, now living in Pennsylvania. This is the second time he's appearing back-to-back -back episodes. Former tough guy from the Philadelphia Flyers, Riley Cote. Riley, thanks for doing this. Give us a give us an update. What are you up to these days, Riley? Uh, we know you're a healer, and that's why I wanted to bring you back on because I thought it was so 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 important uh, for us to. To really dive in and uh, talk because not only do I want to learn um, but I want the the viewers to learn and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit later on about me doing some experimenting and we'll actually touch back here in a month or two to to uh, readdress that but Riley Cote down in Pennsylvania 
Thanks so much for doing this and let us know what you're up to these days. Uh, what's your main focus, Riley? Well, I guess uh, there's a few different things I'm doing right now, but it's all in the world of you know, self-care, personal development, spiritual growth, and, and at the end of the day, it lands up being a little bit about drug diversion. Um, it all kind of is interconnected. It's all about improving ourselves, our daily behaviors, and uh, you know our thinking, and um, everything we engage in, the people we're surrounding ourselves with. Um, and then, again, the addition to all that is using tools along the way. And some of these tools uh, that I land up being involved in are, are plant medicines, whether it's cannabis and, and hemp-derived CBD, uh, functional mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, reishi, chaga, or psilocybin mushrooms. And, um, and nutritional healing and, you know, all these things. And I, I'm, I'm into it all. Um, and they all do have a, an amazing and profound positive effect on the human mind and spirit and, and the physical body um, as, as you learn to take care of yourself. And it's uh, been an interesting journey uh, being, let's say, um, you know, living in a, you know, living in a bubble and, you know, I guess it's, it's, it's living – uh, asleep for, for 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 a long period of time until I kind of um, became uh, awakened to the idea that there's better ways to do what we've been doing um, for so long in an improper manner. And what I mean by that is uh, managing anxiety and stressors, right? I mean, we, 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 we are human in the sense that we all deal with stress and anxiety, but you can either manage it in a positive and sustainable manner and express it in a positive way, or we can, you know, ma- manage stress in a negative way, whether it's harboring it and, and you know, and, and sitting on it and, and drinking alcohol regularly and, and, and in abundance, um, you know, just, uh, just, just, just negative behavior patterns that we land up getting ourselves into when we're not aware um, of our stress, nor are we aware of how to deal with it. So, uh, all connected and then getting into just managing of inf- inflammation and pain, um, you know, without the help of pharmaceutical drugs. So we can, you know, not get addicted to opiates. So we can manage the inflammation and pain in a sustainable manner without learning the risk of an addiction. And just sleep, you know, is managing sleep. I and mean, sleep is the spine of the recovery process. When we sleep better, we, we rest better, we, we heal more, uh, we wake up feeling fresher. And that just jump starts the next day, so we're not you know, starting behind the eight ball and, and having to chase the dragon with stimulants like caffeine and sugar and and, and whatever else people um, seem to lean on for uh, unsustainable energy source. So uh, a lot there, I understand, but um, it's all under this umbrella of holism, and it's it's, it's all integration. It's all you know, integrative functional medicine, if you want to call it that, and just um, a holistic approach to life. Well, I mean, yeah, there's a lot there. And that's exactly why I, I messaged you after episode 31. I said, hey, Riley, do you mind coming on again? And I'll be honest. I mean, I typically go back and listen to my podcast, like, you know, once they get lunch, just to make sure that there's no imperfection, because sometimes it happens. I just send it away to the network. And sometimes, I mean, it hasn't happened a lot. But, you know, I actually haven't been listening to my podcast back. I, I didn't listen to the last four Um through like the full except for years and I went back and I listened to it and as soon as I listened to it I was like wow you know there's so many as I was doing it with you sitting here recording it I was like I have so many questions like this is obviously there's no way we could talk we could talk for a month and there's still be a million more questions however you know hearing it from an athlete right and that's who you work with like with uh athletes for care with uh body check wellness it is it's very athlete oriented and um, the science is behind this. Like I've been doing some of my own research and I don't know if you knew this. I don't know if people knew this. Um, I actually had not heard about this and I mean it's pretty well known. But in 1970, and this is not what we're talking about in microdosing and stuff like that, but this is just goes to show the effects that it can have. So on June 12, 1970, Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher Doc Ellis threw a no-hitter against the Padres while on LSD. I mean... This guy threw a no-hitter in Major League Baseball, well, essentially high on acid. And Mr. Ellis, and I quote, says, I can only remember bits and pieces of the game. I was psyched. I had a feeling of euphoria. I was zeroed in on the catcher's glove. Now, this is the wrong type of um, 
experiment or whatever you want to say, um, you can't look at this and be like, okay, we can just do it. But, but what we're saying is like, it does have these effects. And like, I was listening to Joe Rogan, like, do you know that some of these fighters are actually fighting on micro dose mushrooms? Do you know that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of NHL players are using them really? as well. And high-end high end performers and uh, coders in Silicon Valley. It uh, helps you get in flow state. And that's what it ends up being. Um, you know, that's, I'm assuming what he got into on LSD. I mean, I've done it a couple times in, um, you know, in a higher amount. And I, I can't imagine playing a yeah. sport uh, in, in, in that state. But, uh, you know, depending on the dose. And again, you know, I, I guess if you're forced to do it and you, you can't, whether he took it, you know, intentionally to get that, you know, to get that um, psychedelic effect to, to get in the game, or he, he, he overdid it from like the night before and he was still rolling. I don't know the whole storyline, but uh, I have to imagine he got in the flow state. And that's generally what we talk about when we talk about you know, psychedelics and finding that groove of, uh, of, of focus and clarity and just overall awareness and being present. Um, that's what it really sounds like to me, but. Um, yeah, it's it's becoming a, a very very well known. Well, hundred yeah, uh, because it absolutely works. Go ahead, sorry, Riley. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it absolutely works. I mean, it, people are catching on, and just like cannabis, you know, fifteen years ago when it started becoming a thing, where it was like, oh, this is a, a great pain management tool and a great anti anxiety tool and, ma- and a stress management tool, and you know, I think now people are catching on to. Yeah, you know, they get the the mental health component, right? We have a mental health crisis on our hands. There's a lot of talks around concussions and post concussion syndrome, PTSD, and 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 TTE, and all these things. So, uh, as far as repairing brain damage and you know reconnecting neural pathways and, and connecting new neural pathways, I mean, psilocybin has has been studied for over 30 years in Johns Hopkins University. You know, with synthesized psilocybin, so um, it's not. Uh, too far out there to think that it can actually help improve your cognitive function and and, and performance and, and you know focus and clarity and all those things whether you're an athlete or well, not. Well, yeah, and I just you know I wanted to ask you because you know you have Body Check Wellness, which is I really want to you know I don't have a huge voice, but I you know I'm going to be a huge supporter of it and an advocate for it because I've been looking and there's just so much there like you guys have so many products and so many and I'll be honest these last few days after we talked I've really been doing like I have so much in front of me right now with like stuff that I've been reading and um and it's really piqued my interest and something that I've noticed is like because it's not just so here like I come out so like I've come out that you know I was a heroin addict Really, I was a fentanyl addict. I mean, I did heroin for years, but for the last six years of it, I was just doing, it was all fentanyl because there is no heroin really anymore. It's all fentanyl because of whatever, and that's what's killing people, and it's really terrible. But I mean, like, so I come out, I say, hey, I'm an addict, right? And now I'm, you know, I say I'm clean, right? But I smoke, I smoke pot, and um, so some people will be like, hey, you're not clean or whatever. But to me, that's medicine. And I will say, Riley, on this, now that I've talked to you and, and guys like James McEwen and others, and now that I'm looking at my life on a, on a different level, trying to get healthy, I'm like, hey, like, I'm starting to look at my, my habits of even smoking my weed. Like, yeah, okay, well, I have concussions. I could smoke weed and people, people leave me alone. Oh, so that's okay. But listen, like, I'm not, ex- right now, I'm not exercising. I'm not eating properly um, and I'm not using my marijuana properly I would say like and so for me I feel like it could be it's almost like a dangerous like I'm walking a tightrope so for me to dial it in to find that balance so like I wanted to say like I talk to you I watch videos of you and like I've talked to James McEwen and a few others and I and I've talked to these guys and yourself and and like I said watch videos and you guys all have this calmness, like guys that have been doing it and actually have gone and buy. Like I, it's like I'm like I want that. Like I want that. You know what I mean? Like I am, I see it and I notice it. And it's like I know it takes work, but now I'm like, yeah, I, I want to get there. You know what I mean? And I want to put in the time to learn so that not only can I learn for myself, but that I can share it with others because I could see your passion. Because once you found out about it, like a, we're going back like a decade, right, Riley? Is that how long ago you started doing this? About? Uh, yeah, with intention. Like you know, that little clip you play in the, uh, at the start there. It's like I mean, I've been using mushrooms since I was 15 years old. But again, 
w- w- without intention. It was like you know, the intention was just you know to get to get uh, you know to get the psychedelic effect and go to festivals and concerts. But once you use these medicines, and the same with cannabis, and then once you start using these medicines with intention, understanding the dosing, understanding set and setting, understanding you know how how it is actually affecting your body and, and affecting your nervous system and affecting your your energy levels. Then it's like finding that sweet spot, you know what I mean? Because I think what I've learned, and whether you're talking about mushrooms or, or cannabis, is that most people overconsume. Yes. You know, they overconsume cannabis, where they're now they're belly up on the couch, and, and there's nothing there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, you know, now and then, but if, if that that lands up being your whole life, then you're over you're you're abusing the substance. So you can abuse anything, right? I mean, you you, you can abuse food, you can abuse uh, you know uh, you know Tylenol, you can abuse uh, a hammer, you know, if you misuse any tool, it becomes a weapon. Um, you know, and I guess the beautiful part about cannabis is that there's, there's been no, you know, since the third time, there's never been a documented overdose of cannabis. You can't overdose in cannabis. So, you know, if you overconsumed it, you would still wake up the next morning. So, that, you know, there's, there's, there's like a safety net there with that. Uh, but the idea is to find that, that dose where you're able to get the relief you're looking for. You're able to manage inflammation and the pain anxiety and the stress, right? We're always trying to calm the nervous system. We don't want to be stressed out beings, right? We want, I mean, like any other animal in nature is, 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 is in a natural state is calm. It's relaxed. It's not uptight and tense and anxious, you know what I mean? Until it has to go and fight or, 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 or hunt or, or, you know, run away from a hunt. Then it has to, you know, engage into that, you know, you know fight or flight response. But um, we're trying to be calm, you know? So we, we need to understand the dose that will get us there. If we're if we think we're going to take a hundred milligram edible and you know you wake up in the morning and you're going to feel you know fully charged and ready to go, you know, you're going to sleep like a champ, but you're going to you're going to land sleeping in. You're not going to wake up early and get your day started, you know. Versus like maybe reeling that THC back, you know, maybe 15, 20, 25 milligrams max, and, and, and then balancing it with some CBD, and understanding the terpenes, and all of a sudden you got this more balanced cannabis product where now you got the anti-inflammatory so you got you know you got the, you got the THC the pain management and then you know you're gonna sleep and then you're gonna wake up feeling great but I think that the moral of the story here is that no matter no matter what tools you're using there's, there's a fine line everything can be a medicine or a poison right and and I think that's what most to say westerners I think in the western world here we, we we've just uh, we, we just overconsume everything, you know. We it's like all you can eat buffet nine ninety nine. It's like you can't just go in there for one, you know, one plate of it. You gotta eat five, right? So now if it's, we're, we're just abusing food, and you look around. I mean, people are, you know, a hundred pounds overweight, two hundred pounds overweight, and that doesn't happen naturally in nature until you start eating industrialized food and abusing those foods. And the same thing goes with medicine. When they're talking about Tylenol or cannabis or an opioid, which you're highly, you know, highly addicted compared to, to, to cannabis, that mentality going into using these medicines is, is okay. More is better, you know. Oh, it feels so good. It makes you feel so good. I want more. But you know, these these are te- these are supposed to be temporary crutches, in the sense that okay, you know, crutches help people walk. And now we walk, you can titrate back. You can use less. It's not saying you ever have to use it. You know, you have to stop using it. But you, you don't need as much anymore. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I went from, you know, you know, say from 15, 16 years old, consuming cannabis till 28, you know, every time, you know, I say for the most, most of the times I was consuming, I felt like I had to get this high, you know I mean? I had to, you know, rip it out of a bong every time and, and, and you know, and, and associate cannabis with that level of impairment. But then all of a sudden when I, you know, retired and started reading and understanding some of the, the scientific data that backs all this stuff up was that, you know, Say more microdosing THC. Then all of a sudden, I started learning about CBD, which I, you know, you know, for that, for that 13 years, I never heard of CBD. You know what I mean? It was like it was THC and THC only. That was all you could associate cannabis with. Then all of a sudden, there's another dimension of cannabis. So I'm not just using you know THC um, c- cannabis products. I'm also using high CBD cannabis products. Then all of a sudden, there's a balance, there's a respect for the plant. I think at the end of the day, it's always about respect. It's respecting the substance, respecting the tools you're using, and then at the end of the day, respecting yourself. Because that's what it comes down to, self-care, self-respect, self-love. And then once you understand it from that perspective, everything around you, you just understand, you know, again, if you're around negative people all the time that are, you know, annoying the shit out of you, 
because they're, you know, complaining and whining and, you know, and, and living in fear and anger. Um, you don't want to be around those people. So naturally, you know, as you start taking care of yourself more, you remove yourself from these people. You know, it's like your vibe attracts your tribe. Now you're around more positive people. Now you're around, you know, more energetic and driven people and holistic people versus, you know, like once you stop drinking and stop going to the bar, you're not going to see those degenerates pass out the bar and puking on themselves and all this, you know, negativity of self destruction. So um, anything can be a medicine and or a poison. It all depends on the dose and the respect value going so into it. So where are we at? In the hockey world, with all this stuff from your experience, I mean, it must have changed in the last decade or, or whenever. I mean, there's a lot more access to information and people. There's a less, the stigma has lessened quite a bit, in, in my opinion. But And you must have seen a lot of change. But as of today, like right now, where does the NHL and the hockey community as a whole stand with cannabis microdosing mushrooms and this whole uh, holistic approach do they see it for its whole entirety or do you get a lot of people that only see drugs and see oh that's a drug that's bad because our culture has you know the the war on drugs since the 1970s or whatever and, and we did everybody just seems as bad 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 and eventually we're breaking down these walls and things are getting less stigmatized and everything however there's still that older generation i feel that are like no 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 and like how has the reception been recently well it's there with cannabis i mean cannabis has come uh, a long long way from where players were hiding it, obviously from the from management and the coaching staff around the locker room, it was like a very like you know underground thing to do after practice. The guys would use it, you know, even even in the evening or at the bar, or, you know, whatever, wherever they consume cannabis. I went from like you know that really dark stigma, you know, cannabis look to you know that was now there's essentially a cannabis based product for everybody. So even if you were a guy that you know, didn't want to associate with cannabis because you're worried about the high. And now you have these, you know, these CBD products, hemp derived CBD products. There's nothing to do with getting high. So it opens up, you know, the, the, the can of worm for, you know, the very conservative player. There's still guys using flour or vape, you know, THC products. And you got this whole other group of guys that are, you know, just, you know, more, more focused on the anti-inflammatory and, and anti-anxiety and, and stress management tools of, uh, of the CBD. So, um, to, your, to your point or to your question there, uh, where is the league at? So cannabis is still a banned substance under the drug testing policies within the, within the NHL. However, um, CBD, you don't test the CBD, right? I mean, THC they're testing for. So there's, a, there's, a, there's loopholes in the sense that you could use a THC-free product, whether it's broad spectrum or isolate, CBD isolate, and you would never have to worry about failing a drug test. There's, there, there is a potential chance using a full spectrum product, you could fail a drug test. You're not going to fail the NHL's drug test because their nanogram particles of THC is, is significantly higher than most drug tests. Therefore, you have to eat like a 100 milligram THC gummy bear the night before your drug test, even, you know, to test, uh, uh, to, to fail a, a drug test in the NHL, um, substance abuse program. So, um, that being said, it's still, it is still a bad substance. So it's not, you know, it's not like the strength and conditioning coach and the medical staff is saying, okay, guys, we got this amazing <laughs> tool that we're going to use and we how to use it with respect because with everything we do on the ice is going to induce inflammation. And the whole formula is work versus recovery. So when you're not working, you're supposed to be focusing on recovery, healing, getting the lactic acid out, removing inflammation, resting, sleeping properly and cannabis. You know, whether you're talking about THC or CBD, the cannabis plant has the ability to really emphasize that, right? So, uh, right now, I, I, I look at that. This is a missed opportunity for a management thing, really focusing on recovery, focusing on prevention of injury. Because when your players are more rested and when your players are re healing better and recovering better, you, you know, inadvertently, you would actually um, prevent injury. And then the kicker on it all is that the U.S. government holds a patent on cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants. So, you know, we talked about the concussion issue, you know, the brain trauma issue, mental health issue is, is that cannabinoids are great for the brain. 
you know, it goes against everything we've ever told about cannabis. It's like the old commercial of like the, the cracking <laughs> the egg and the frying pan. This is your brain on drugs. It's like, no, that's bullshit. You know, that's propaganda. That's not true. And, uh, you know, all I do is try and bring the truth to, you know, to the light and, and, to, and to the people. So I'd like to see it where the management, you know, top down. It's like, okay, this is the protocol here. You know, guy gets his bell rung. We're going to, you know, we're going to give him 100, 200 milligrams of CBD after. And there's actually studies coming out that if you actually have CBD in your body consistently, that you're actually protecting your brain before the, the brain trauma occurs. So maybe you get your bell rung. And maybe a four-week concussion lands up being a two-week concussion. Or maybe a two-week concussion lands up being, you know, a day to day yeah. But if it's your go-to guy, if you're captain of your team, that's the difference of making the playoffs, not making the playoffs. That's the difference of winning a championship and not winning a championship. So, you know, there's obviously, you know, uh, a lot of dots to connect there. But um, And you're not going to be able to really quantify that necessarily. But, you know, a- 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 as an organization that's supposed to be protecting their assets, protecting their investments, I mean, there's no better way to do that with, with say, starting with cannabis and, and heavy on the CBD. Yeah. High anti-inflammatory, you know, great for recovery, great for sleep, great for protecting the brain. Then you get to, you know, and it's still a Schedule One drug in the U.S. So there's, there's obviously politics there. So the old heads, the old heads are really not understanding this entirely, right? The younger generation understands it. They'll, they'll use it. But it's, it's, it's a tough one because, there's a, you know, there's, there's, there's politics involved and there's, a, there's obviously legalities involved. So you don't want you guys crossing over the U.S. and, and Canada border with cannabis and then getting popped or whatever. You know, there's some liability issues there. I can see why. But I'd like to see it where they remove the, the cannabis altogether, like they did in the NFL, no longer testing for THC. And not that they were suspending guys for THC really anyways, but... Um, remove that and then you know the next the next step to all that is again to teach the guys how to use it this is just me this is like systematic this is something from the top down teach them to respect cannabis teach them how to use it properly teach them dosing teach them terpene teach them you know all that good stuff and you want to get on the mushrooms you know that's like you know five ten years that's like ten year plan probably you know what i mean it's it's it, it, it's being used with by players but the laws aren't even close to even becoming, you know, um, anywhere near where they are with cannabis. And, you know, because of that reason, there's no way, you know, management will ever get behind it. Even if you have all the science, you know, handed to you right in front of you, there's no way they possibly can. It's because it's like, how can you, how can you recommend something that's a Schedule One drug to your players, right? So even if you believe in it as a GM, you certainly can endorse it. So if the players are on their own, they're figuring it out on their own, they're using it, just like they are with cannabis, and they have been for, for you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, guys have been using it. Um, but we're, we're, we're a lot further away to seeing psilocybin normalized in sports um, to the point where, you know, teams and, and management and, and, and medical staff are actually recommending it based on legality. There's liability, obviously, there. But um, I think guys are becoming aware even probably older guys in management are you know seeing studies come out and seeing this and that and becoming at least it's on their radar but but as far as like them actually doing anything with that information and intelligence they really can't do anything their hands are how many sure. how many other guys are are doing that i mean i see guys quite a few guys involved in the the cannabis for sure but not too many, you know, stamping their name on something like mushrooms and that. Like, I know I've watched your videos. Like, you, when I, I talk to you, like, you believe in 100%. I believe you. I've read enough outside of the things you've told me and I've read from you that I believe in 100% too. Like, but seeing in your videos, even like the ones from way back when you first started, like, you know, like, you could just see that you believed in it 100%. It's like you almost want to, like I almost want to get frustrated at the whole situation, but you can't because you just again you got to stay positive and, and realize that it you know might be a process. And at the end of the day, um, as long as you know, you know I'm you know getting the benefits from it and trying to um, you know share my experiences and, and help people as many people as I can, then that's really all I can do personally. I, I feel, um, but where like. Where are we really, like, you know, you see concussions, you see like, yeah, we saw a lot about it, but it, we didn't see a lot about it until Sidney Crosby went down. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it took for the NHL to really take a look at it was for the best player in the world to get to get hurt or whatever. So, like, do you think, like, Sidney Crosby would have ever thought about any of this treatment? Like, do you think it would have came across in that time frame i mean it was a few years ago but he was out for a long time like did you do you ever hear about p 
people actually being suggested this like when there's no other options like at what point do you see guys go no i will never ever ever do this and then all of a sudden they're on the team you know what i mean like do you ever see that well you know i think i think you know now you know in this this day and age i mean a lot more than certainly when when crosby had a concussion issues i don't know how many years ago that was like it's gotta be at least I don't even know what six, seven years, eight I years guess, ago, yeah. right? I mean, how I many guess, years yeah, ago? I've been in the dark. Maybe I've been in the yeah, dark. So been, yeah, yeah. I mean, that might have been a little bit too soon um, for him to, you know, be a little bit leaning into the CB at that time. Um, but maybe not. You know, I mean, I think these high end guys. What I've learned is that when they're banged up, um, the, the management, the medical staff will do anything. They will send them to any doctor, any specialist to get, you know, 10 opinions if they have to. And, and I can speak for a current day uh, NHL player that had dealt with a concussion this past season. Um, they, they shipped them to a doctor in, Cal- in Colorado that is a psychotherapist, licensed psychotherapist that legally administers psilocybin mushrooms, DMT, and ketamine. Wow. So it is becoming a thing just very very under the radar because it is alternative it just goes against the agenda you know what i mean this is very misunderstood information and back to your point you're like you know like it, you, you you mentioned me like talking about this stuff and believing it and it's like i i think what i realized early when i retired is the more i in tune i got with myself and tune with like when i got with my with my being and my, my physical body my mind and spirit and started connecting it all the more in tune i was to receiving information like intuition, right? I mean, this is like you hear about this all the time. It's like intuition is just like believing something without having science to validate it. And some people call that common sense, which I guess there's a lot of it, right? I mean, you look at the natural world and you look at how pharma's ripped off the natural world and synthesized it and charged a lot of money and and, and, is, and is made it a disastrous mess. So you can sit back and, and, and you know look look from a bird's eye view and say, oh, okay, I, I get it. You know, they synthesized cannabis and they called it marinol and dravinol uh, but the, but but the real plant is outlawed <laughs> and then you know you synthesize you psilocybin you, you know what i mean because the synthesized version is the is the pharma model right so it's, it's a natural versus synthetic it's, you know what i mean and that's the world we're living in so becoming a holist uh it just it just everything kind of clicked and made sense for me but you have to believe it before you see it you know what i mean it's like you know, you know what i mean it's like you have to believe in your heart because i was believing in this way before there was you know you say it's like the real science was validating all this stuff and it's like it goes against everything we were taught every you know growing up parents weren't certainly weren't sticking up for this and and educating you on this the church wasn't school wasn't law enforcement wasn't so you have to wean through all the shit and all the negativity and the propaganda to find truth and that's what you know human beings have always been uh, about is, is, is truth seeking, right? I mean, you have to be able to to to, to, to wean, your, you know, navigate yourself through life and, and, and wean through the misinformation and the bullshit and seeing the politics in it, and then make a decision on what's good for you. And to your point earlier about you know people, you know, making negative remarks about you using cannabis when you're, you're you know supposed to be clean. It's like who's playing God here? Unless you're enrolled in an AA program where they say, you know, essentially. All things are off limits. Like, who, who's playing God to think that's what you have to do for recovery? I mean, you know, DMAC and, and you probably know several others, that have, including myself, that use cannabis as an exit yeah. drug to get off these pharmaceutical drugs and alcohol and that bullshit yeah. poison, you know? And, and, and so for anybody that says that to you is, is ignorant. And, you know, it, I, I think that's what you just have to be comfortable with. You have to be comfortable in your own skin and, and believing that you're doing the right thing. Because I had a lot of people question me early on and saying, you know, you don't, you can't do it that way. You have to do it this way. Like my last two surgeries, I didn't take the pharmaceutical drugs. I just used cannabis. They say, you can't do that. I said, yes, I can. Who's going to stop yeah. me? You know, and because I believe so much into it that, that and been reading about it and, and understanding the storyline and, and prohibition and then the science. And then I just, I was so confident in my belief system. And this was, you know, going back to 2010, I understand there was people way before me in, in the cannabis advocacy world that believe in this as medicine and we're fighting for, you know, our rights and all this stuff. But, you know, for me to basically transition from this robotic 
industrialized model of thinking to this, you know, holistic, natural way of thinking. Um, it, it almost happened overnight because it started with nutritional healing. I started connecting with my diet. You talk about industrialized food, you know, whether it's refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, processed food, processed meat, um, you, you name it, it's poison. Um, it's coming out of a box or a can, you know what I mean? It's, 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 there's, there's a lot of chemicals and, and heavy metals and, you know, preservatives and all these things the body is, is trying to eliminate. You know, you piss, you shit, and you sweat. And if your body can't rid itself of it, the poison stays in your body. And it sits in fat cells, it sits in your colon, and then it sits in your GI. And then it just manifests itself into whether it's physical disease, mental health issues. Um, it's all connected. So we have to, you know, we have to constantly uh, understand this and rid ourselves of, of the poison and, and feed ourselves what our body needs is nutrients. It needs, it needs minerals, you know, it needs hydration, you know, it needs to be an alkaline, you know, we need to be living in a pH balance in, in the alkaline world, not the acidic world, you know, and I'm, I'm probably getting off a little bit off topic here, but the, the bottom, the bottom line is, is there's, there's a lot of pieces that go into health, but most of them are pretty simple fundamentals of living, right? We need clean water. We need clean air, we need clean food, and we need to we need to manage our stress, and we need to have mindful movement. You know, and, and, and if, I think if we do those things the right way, you have a pretty good chance of being healthy. But unfortunately, um, you know, our diets are, are extremely polluted. You know, we're, we're worried about calories, macronutrients, but we're not worried about minerals, right? We're essentially eating empty calories, and then we, you know, we, we get. We get heavy, we get sick, we got GIs, we got acid reflux, and then instead of you know, looking at the root cause of what caused that, we just go to the doctor who we trust so much mm. and just essentially put our hands up and say, uh, "Give me what you got," because I'm not going to be willing to do anything about it, and I'm not, I'm not accountable for my disease or my condition. I am uh, a victim, and I, I surrender. So give me what you got, and I'm going to go home and fill the script and, and take it. You know, versus, you know, seeing a natural path or self-reflecting and being, okay, why am I constipated? Let's look through my diet. Let's look, let's look through my medicine. Oh, is it an opiate that's causing constipation? Is it, a, is it an abundance of cheese? Is it an abundance of, of, of fiber from beans or something? I, I don't even know. Uh, but there's, there's several things that can cause constipation. Your body's way of saying, hey, it's a red flag here. Do something about it. Or you can just say, guess what? I'm constipated. I'll go to the doctor and get a prescription. And, you know, that prescription will make me not constipated anymore, but it's probably going to cause another problem down the road. So point being is we, we got to get the root cause of why we're sick. Why do we have mental health issues? Are we disconnected? Disconnected to ourselves? Are we disconnected to people, mother nature? You know what I mean? We've, w what is it? You know, if we have diabetes, I mean, whether it's type 1 or type 2, if it's, if it's uh, you know, the type 1, it's probably because your, 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 your sugar content is extremely high. You're probably eating a lot of you know meats and processed meats, so you know reeling that in. You know, cancer, cancer. What fuels cancer? Go figure. Sugar, refined sugar. It sparks you know it it, it sparks your cancer growth, and 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 so when you if you want to start treating these things, you have to look at your environment and your and your diet. Start starving it. You know you don't feed your body the shit that's poisoning you. You know, and then, you know, so then the same thing goes when you're leaning on medicines. It's like, okay, well, now we have to understand what types of medicine we're using. But most people are just not even aware of any of this. And, the, and until, until, you know, the carpet's pulled from underneath them and then, and then they're belly up. And, and, you know, and then they're desperation mode. And there's no way they can reel it in now. So it's like the sooner we can reel it in and make some sense of our lives and what we're, what we're doing to our lives and how we're treating ourselves. It always goes back to self-love. I, you know, I have to always go back to that. Are we loving ourselves? If you don't love yourself, you really can't truly love. And I think every religious text talks about that because it comes with, it starts with self-love and that's like, it's not selfish to love yourself. And I mean, I don't mean that in a, in a you know, arrogant, egotistical way. I know it sounds like that, but it's, it's caring for yourself. It's waking up in the morning and having a routine that's positive. It's positive thinking first thing in the morning, positive affirmations, nice healthy breakfast if you're going to do it, or, or intermittent fasting because you're aware of, you know, fasting as, a, as an amazing tool to boost metabolism and, and cleanse, um, you know, and all these things. And I know I'm rambling in a bunch of different ways here, but these are all relative to the human condition, healing, and wellness. And, you know, you look around, it's like you got a mental health crisis on our hands. you got a 
an opiate crisis on our hands. We got an obesity crisis on our hands. We got, you know, a, a cancer and heart disease crisis on our hands. Like, how can that be? You know what I mean? We're supposed to be so advanced. We're supposed to be so far ahead, you know, as far as our, our medical um, establishment goes. But we've been fundamentally misled. They've hit the bullseye on the wrong target. It's, it's, it's like consumerism. It's just more, more, more. I need more. I need more. I see a great ad on TV. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Okay, let's go bang out a uh, bowl of <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Flakes GMO Flakes. I mean, it's like, you know, that, that that's not real food. You know what I mean? And the people are, are, are somehow, you know, your, your body's just trying to live. It's trying to survive. It's trying its best to survive. But we're just killing ourselves, poisoning ourselves with all this garbage we're putting in our bodies, in our mouths, and in our ears. You know, I mean, the, the shit we listen to, you, we wake up in the morning, we fire on uh, Fox News, CNN, some negative bullshit that's coming mm-hmm. on, right? Wars and negativity and fear and anger and hostility and divide. You know what I mean? It's like, or you don't turn on that and you read a book. You know, you can select your programming. It's called programming for a reason because it's programming it. You know what I mean? So step away from it and then start filling your head space with positivity. Start telling yourself you're good enough. You're smart enough. You're strong enough. You know, you, 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 you're, you're beautiful enough. Start, you know, self, self-reflecting, telling yourself that you are good enough to t- tackle this world instead of, you know, being living, you know, living in fear. When you're living in fear, you're stressed. When you're stressed, disease manifests itself. And then you're, you know, behind the eight ball Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Right, man, you're so, like, wise. And I know you've been doing this, but it's just, you know, like... It... <laughs> I'm trying to it, like I listen. I've read a lot of your articles. I've I've watched a lot of uh, the things you've done on YouTube. Different, what almost like podcasts, but you know, interviews and stuff. Um, you know, but it's like, man, like I just, I don't know. Like I, for once in my life, I feel like I have a chance. You know what I mean? And yes, even before I started looking at you know, really changing my life. Like, I knew I was going to have to change my life. Like, let's be honest. I was fucking sitting in jail, (laughs) severely addicted to drugs, long ways from pro hockey. Like, couldn't even believe that I was there, but I was, like, ready to give up. And, like, obviously, anybody with half a brain, realize you realize at that moment that you need to make some drastic changes, right? Like, and I thought of, dreamt of what that was going to look like and how I was going to do it. And I just, I couldn't even do it. I couldn't not visualize it because I was like, there's no way there is no coming back from this. Like there just isn't. And, um, you know, I started while I was in there, I started working out and now I'm not working out. But like if somebody let's say is listening right now, um, and they're either going through mental health or addiction or any of this stuff and they were seriously looking, um, at what you do and you know how you live your life and you were to give somebody advice to say okay um, what is the first step that somebody should take if they want to um, really make a difference and start living their life at a like a holistic approach there's two things that we talk about it's purpose you gotta have purpose right if there's no purpose that that's where you get caught in these ruts of just like you know it's like chasing this, your tail because you, you have no direction, right? You have nothing to strive for. So I guess my, pur- my purpose in my old life was to play, play in the NHL, right? I mean, even though it's a superficial and essentially shallow purpose, like that's what it was in the moment. And I had a direction and I had structure. You know what I mean? Even though uh, even my structure, I was, I was way off on some of the stuff I did. But nonetheless, I had a goal. I, I stood for something and I had a purpose. And then when I transitioned out, I almost immediately had a purpose. Like it was like I found my purpose for first of all, working on myself, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're not growing, you're dying. You always have to be improving yourself. So I started reading books. Like, I never read books, honestly, in my whole life. Like, I don't think I finished a book until I retired from hockey at 28. Started just knocking out books. Just started filling my head space with positivity. And, and it ha- but the, the purpose was working on myself and then helping others. Like, you know, say helping others in the sense of helping them find these tools. You know, healing. And so I like, you know, you line up being a healer. I was like, I'm not healing anybody. I just, the healer just gives people the information, helps them along the way. They have to make the decision. It's like the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink it. I mean, how, how many conversations have I had? I'm talking like this and I'm the blue in the face. The people at the end of the day are going to make their own decisions. But if you don't have purpose, you really don't have a whole, a whole shot. And, and, and then the other one is just, uh, it's, it's connection. It's reconnection. 
it's like what I've learned with mental health issues from in my, my own and just like having these conversations with a lot of different people is, is, is there's this disconnection to the self. You know, again, going back to the self-love, it's like we're disconnected to the self and there's no self-love and self-respect and self-care. We're not really serving our spiritual being, right? I mean, it's just like, it's like, what's the point? And then this connection again, that's in Mother Nature earlier. It's like, okay, well, it's like, see, that's coming through diet. It's like, we eat four or five times a day. If we're eating shit four or five times a day, how can we expect to be well? You know, your physical body, you're going to get fat and look like shit. But then that just reflects your, your mind and your mental health and your spiritual health. So, like, we got to reel that in. Food is everything. Food is information. Food is intelligence. It's a big difference eating an apple and a Snickers yeah. bar. Your body doesn't want the Snickers bar, even though it tastes so goddamn good because of sugar, right? And that's what we're addicted to, sugar and sodium, sugar and sodium, and not, like, Himalayan pink salt. We're, you know, we're, we're hooked on, you know, the white salt, you know, the, the, t- the white table salt, refined salt. And we're not... We're not hooked on fruit sugar, you know, mangoes. We're, we're hooked on high fructose corn syrup and refined sugar. So a big difference when you're talking about the, those worlds. But reconnection, reconnection, going to nature and just mm-hmm. being, you know, just listening, being present, you know, all these things. But, you know, so purpose and, and connection, you know, I think we're just, we're disconnected beings. We've got our, our smartphones in our hands and a computer all around us. We're, we're connected in that sense, but we're not connected to ourselves. We hardly even have face-to-face conversations anymore. You know, no eye-to-eye contact, just like text messages and you know, no connection there. And then again, connection to Mother Nature, whether it's the food or the medicine, the plant medicines, cannabis, mushrooms. I mean, mushrooms are extremely spiritual, connecting, grounding, helping with ego yeah. death, humbling. You know what I mean? We need, to, we need to lose our egos because everyone's, you know, everyone's so just saturated in ego. And, and you know, I think... When you become more connected and more grounded, you, 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 your ego is just naturally dissolved because not not that it dissolves completely because ego, you know, actually is a tool. You know, it brings awareness into identity and and who you are. But it's, it's very humbling in the sense that your ego isn't leading your identity. You know, your energy is leading your identity, and that's like through just you know being positive and helping and, and, and without arrogance. You know, I mean, people can smell arrogance a mile away and an ego a mile away. So. Um, connection and purpose, honestly, and I know it sounds a little bit vague, but as soon as you start, as soon as you start working on yourself, and Jim Rohn said this, and he's more a bit more of a business inspirational speaker, but he talks always about working on yourself. Work on yourself harder than you work on you know, working your job. Constantly work on yourself. Read books, meditate, do breath work. Work, you know, every time you eat, like folk, you at least try your best to try and have a you know a balanced a balanced meal, a balanced snack. Every, you know what I mean? Like, it's always working on yourself, always working on yourself. When you work on yourself, it's naturally, you know, say the law of karma kicks in because you are doing positive. You're doing good for yourself. And then the way the law of karma works is the universe responds in a similar fashion versus if you're destroying yourself all day long and every night and you're going boozing all night and you're waking up hungover and you're dehydrated and all this other stuff like well, something negative is probably going to happen. You're going to get in a fight at the bar, you're going to get a car accident, or something negative where you wake up and you feel like shit, or it's going to manifest itself in disease. Yeah. The law of karma, right? I mean, so it's just, uh, yeah, man, it's just, um, we just have to make the decision to be accountable. You know, take control of our lives. You have to, you just have to grab the bull by the horns and, 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 and reel it in. Honestly, it's hard to do because, a lot of people love the victim mentality. It's like, oh, boo-hoo, look what they did to me, or look what he did to me, or, you know, look what they, these people did to me. And it's like, no, no, um, we have to be accountable too, right? I mean, we put ourselves in a lot of these situations. I mean, I, I, I signed up to get punched in the face for a living, so I have to be accountable to fix that. You know what I mean? It looks glorious from the outsider's perspective, but, you know, from playing the NHL and stuff, it's like, you know, I'm telling you the truth, it wasn't overly fulfilling for me. And most hockey players probably have a different, you know, um, you know, story when it comes to that. But, you know, for me, in my role, you know, and, and you know, in my, at that point in my life, it was just like, okay, this is playing the NHL. This is like living my childhood dream. You know, where's the fulfillment? Because I was, I was, I was chasing, you know, uh, an egocentric dream, maybe, you know, it was chasing money, chasing the, the glory. And then it just wasn't fulfilling. It wasn't until I retired and made way less money and grounded myself and humbled myself 
and connected back to myself and connected to other beings and mother nature and started to live this holistic life that I feel fulfilled and happiness because happiness isn't something any material thing can give you like happiness is generated within you so if you can't be happy with what you got now you're not going to be happy when you, you know when you when you when you make the big bucks and, you, and, you, and your business and everything becomes successful and you have money coming in, you're not going to be happy there either. Because I've seen a ton of rich people very unhappy and have mental health issues and, and uh, you know, and addiction issues. So it starts with self-love. I always go back to that. you got to – the self-love breeds the happiness. And the happiness is, 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 is forever, um, no matter whether you're, you know, you're, you're living in Africa with, you know, living off, you know, grains of rice. Or if you're living in the Western world and, you, you know, you're living in this industrialized world with a – successful business it don't matter the happiness is, is curated from within and you look at those cultures and those people in different parts of the world that have true happiness look at the connection they have they, they, they connect to each other in the community they live off the land you know what i mean that they're, they're in good shape just naturally because they're eating a balanced diet of, uh, of mother nature and they smile and they laugh and they sing and they do all these like simple fun, simple fundamental spiritual things that humans do but we're just so disconnected on the West, you know. I think that's why we have such a mental health that we're 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 looking outside of ourselves to find happiness. You know, we're trying to look, you know, into things to f- be fulfilled, and even even corporate spirituality like religion is unfulfilling for a lot of people because there's holes in it. You know, but believing in yourself, I mean, believing yourself in the sense that you are a creator, you create your own reality. Whether you're talking about actual art and creation. Or creating your, you know, your future, and that's through, you know, daily behavior, simple fundamentals by positive thinking, and constantly getting into that cycle of uh, visualization, visualizing that you already have the money, that you already, you know, you already made this good business successful, because that's your mindset versus thinking negatively and, you know, in that low vibration. It so, sounds all. It sounds. Um, yeah, yeah no, it sounds know. all like you know when you when you break it down that way and i mean people have been saying it for a long time right like you just it sounds very simple but you said it, it is it's extremely difficult to do like it takes work and it people i i find myself like you know it a lot of it can be uncomfortable like when you start to to do these things i feel like you know we look for the path of re- least resistance all the time um and it's yep. just you know for 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 real change to occur you need to make real change. Like you can't. Like I've heard this before. Like you know, you make a you make a New Year's resolution on on fucking Jan- or December thirty first, um, but then you know to lose weight. But then you don't even readdress. You don't even address it again until next December thirty first. Do you think you're gonna lose weight? Like you need to. Key, like you said, it's like build. It's like working out. You work out these muscles and you build them up, and you just you learn as you, you know. You keep building as you go, and it's like. Man, it's really incredible. I mean, even just listening to you talk from now to the things that I've been watching from you years ago, it's just, it just it makes me excited that you know I have the opportunity to learn this and share this with people. And you know what I mean? It's it's just really incredible. So before I let you go, and like we've talked, and we're probably gonna do like a, a third part of this, like a month or two down the road, um, maybe even with someone like Gratz, like Josh Gratz, and he's coming on. I talked to him earlier today. He's actually gonna um, set me up. Um, if you don't, um, cause I want to talk to you first about it because I want to actually start microdosing mushrooms. And this is the thing. So like this, uh, you know, I was really unsure of how my dad was going to respond. So my dad's a retired firefighter. He's a scout in the WHL now. And like, he is a no bullshit, no drugs, no, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you can imagine what it's been like for him with me, with all this stuff. Like my family just doesn't, nobody's been to jail. Nobody does drugs really. Nobody does. And I was just like, went from not doing any of that to the worst extreme case ever. And so my dad has been, you know, through the ringer with me, of course, like literally combing the streets of Vancouver over like overdosed bodies looking for me. Cause I was homeless on Hastings. Like that's how bad it was. And you know, I was really, really nervous to tell my dad I, I sent him a voice message today because he always asked me he's like who's up next or who's on next because he likes the podcast now because we're finally talking again after like 10 years because he's like knows I'm not being uh you know 
in that addiction, I'm trying to better myself, right? And, and, and do something. So it's nice. But I was nervous to tell my dad because he's like, oh, who's on again? I'm like, oh, it's Riley Cote again. He's like, oh, good, good. He's like, I was like, yeah, there's a lot there. He's like, yeah, no doubt. Like, for sure, that's a good idea. And then I said, oh, yeah, and I'm going to, I'm probably going to microdose mushrooms. My girlfriend Taylor is like, you probably shouldn't tell your dad that. And she's never even met my dad in person, but she just heard him over the phone. And like, he can kind of like, you know, he's just very, He's very skeptical of me. Like, it's been 10 years of going every... And I'll tell you what, my dad has been so positive. And I was so nervous of his response. I think he was going to be like, that's not a good idea, you know, because he's older and like whatever. And my dad gave me a fuck of thumbs up. I had my headphones and my AirPods in. And it said, I was waiting for the text because it reads me my text. It reads me my text. And it's like, Brian Liebold says, thumbs up emoji. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I tell him, look at my phone. I'm like... Told my girlfriend, I'm like, my dad's fucking giving me a thumbs up about microdosing. So obviously he's listening and he's done some research and he believes that it can be helpful. So that to me, the fact that my dad is supporting me through this is, I mean, maybe it's not that crazy because it's, look, there's science behind it, whatever. But for me personally, for my dad to actually be like, okay, the drug addict's going to go and do a schedule one drug, but really it's microdosing and it's helping. Like he's not even seen like before, I swear he would have been like, no, that's a bad idea. But because I'm like connecting with you and, and doing it in the right way, and I will. Like I don't want to do things like like I'm gonna tone down my smoking pot. Like I wanna like you said, respect the plant, respect myself, respect just the process of my recovery of my life. Like you said, it life really is. It, you, it's you have your own canvas. You, it's art. You can you can create art out of anything. Like, you know, and it's just, it's beautiful when you look at it that way. And I really didn't look at life like that for a long time. So um, I want to talk to you quickly before I let you go about the microdosing. When do you suggest that I start doing it? And what is the suggested regimen? Because I've read a couple of different things. People, some people say two days on, two days off. Some people go more days on, more days off. What for you has worked? And I mean, maybe it's different with everybody, but what would your suggestion be to someone like me who's going to do it for the first time? Yeah, well, there's definitely a few different philosophies, and I've tried you know, several different philosophies with it. I don't, I don't think there's a right or wrong one. Um, I'll tell you the truth. So let's, let's start with say, Dr. James Fadiman. I mean, he's like, you know, they say the pioneer of microdosing cannabis or microdosing psilocybin. Um, he's like oh, 82 years old, and he's, you know, kind of, was friendly with all those, you know, those old psychedelic heads of the Timothy Learys and, 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 and Albert Hoffman's and and those types of guys, he's written a book on it, you know, and, and the whole bit. His philosophy is 100 milligrams from one day off, a one day on, and then and then uh, three days okay. off, which is like I've tried that before. I didn't think it was enough. Um, so then I tried two days on, two days off, and then I've tried three days on, one day off. So it's just somewhere in that ballpark, really. And then I've tried from 100 milligrams to 100, you know, 70 milligrams, you know, in, in, in a day when I'm doing it. So, you know, for me, what I've learned, uh, I, I think the whole idea, is the, the whole idea with the days off is just to not build dependency. Again, it's just showing intention and showing respect towards it. They're not saying take it you know, seven days a week because then they'll be like, okay, well now you're, you're gonna you're gonna get not, you're not gonna get addicted to it. There's no really addictive properties to it, but it just lands up being habitual and you, know, you build up dependency. So the whole idea is to not do that. So you're giving it a day off here, day off there. I think that's the bottom line here. So I think starting at a hundred milligrams, I think for a guy like you, I would start with, you know, two days on two or three days on, and then, you know, say one or two days off. I, I think you need to, you know, you probably need to get it into you a little bit more. Um, and and, I, and I, probably the same way, honestly, I think for me, three days on one day off is probably, um, you know, the best for me. Um, and then again, some of these microdoses have other mushrooms in there, like lion's mane and cordyceps and reishi. So they add that extra value of, you know, just to focus and clarity. So it'll help improve mood and everything. So uh, you, you can, I, I would start as soon as you can. I know there's a bunch of different sources up there in Canada. Um, and I would, uh, again, you start with 100 milligrams and you can always. You know, you take a little more. I mean, even if you, you can even split it in half. I mean, you know, there's, that's the beautiful part about, um, say, medicine or alternative medicine or any medicine is let's just focus on the alternative and the plant medicine. But is there's no one size fits all approach, right? You look at cannabis. Some people might take 10 milligram edible and they might be like, you know, way in over their head. Or the next person can consume a 100 milligram edible. So, um, you know, everyone's a little bit different. But I think that. The range is between, you know, microdose is between 100 milligrams and 250 milligrams. 
that's like the range which would be considered a, a microdose. So that's a tenth of a gram to a quarter of a gram of psilocybin mushrooms. So, um, you know, insignificant as far as, uh, you know, the, the psychedelic effect, but you are getting the subtle focus and, cl- and clarity that, you know, that these, uh, these mushrooms bring. So, you know, again, depending on who you talk to, you find a bunch of different philosophies. Um, you know, I think, I think I told grass, you know, there's two and two, I think he's going two days on two days off. Um, so, you know, somewhere in that range, but I think one's not enough. One day on three days off, not enough. Two days is probably, you know, two, three days uh, is a good start and then work out, work from there. You'll, you'll know. And you'll is know. this, you know, you, you, if that, that is too much or too little, you know what I mean? It's like, and how you know. long do you do this for? Is this like an ongoing thing or do you do it for a month and then a month off or what's the, is it sort of just... Is this something that you can do for? Yeah, I think you. I think it's like. Yeah, I think I think you can do it for longer periods of time for sure. I think just like cannabis, it's always good to hit a reset button, just give yourself a little bit of a breather. You know, if you're anybody who knows uh, anything with cannabis and using cannabis, is you know, you, 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 if you fast from cannabis, you know, 48, 72 hours, it's amazing how powerful cannabis is. You know, on that third day or that second day, right? I mean, because you fast it, they might need, you actually might need less. The whole idea is, you know, is, is, is to use the least amount of product possible to get the, re- the relief that you're using, right? I mean, no one wants to be, you know, smoking five grams of cannabis a day or using, you know, 400 milligrams of cannabis a day. But some people need that to get through the phase that they're in, whether they're dealing with a chronic disease or their chronic pain or you know, mental health issue, you know, concussion issues. Like I remember when I started taking CBD, I was you know, probably taking 150, 200 milligrams of CBD a day. You know, now, you know maybe at 50 or 60. So, you know, the whole idea is to not to have the max dose. It's a micro, you know, it's a micro dose. Have less is more. Even, even my, my cannabis consuming habits, like I was, you know, smoking, you know, pretty regularly throughout the day and, you know, in higher amounts. And now it's like, it's a micro dosing flower. It's just like, almost like, almost like a one hitter amount. It's just enough to take the edge yeah. off, but not enough to impair me where it's like, okay, now, now I don't really feel as productive as I should be. So, that's the thing, same thing. With microdose is a little bit different than, than cannabis because it's like you can trick a little bit more. Well, now it's not like you're going to be lazy, but it's like it's just crossing that line of like uh, ultra focus to now you're into that, you know, a little bit of a psychedelic state where your mind's kind of like wandering and it's hard to stay present, right? So that's just, uh, you know, a little bit of trial and error and self experimentation. But you know, if you stay in the range of 100 to 250 milligrams, you're, you're not going to have to worry about that. So start at 100, you know, and, uh, Two days on, two days off. Try that for a week, and then you know, try something the next week. And sooner or later, you're gonna fight and figure out what's best for you. And then same go thing goes with cannabis. It's like start titrating back. You know what I mean? Even in the morning, there's nothing wrong with smoking first thing in the morning. Start your day off nice and calm. Maybe a little bit less. And then I, I, we talked to you about, about CBD. I think you should, you know, really focus on getting some CBD in there and bring that balance into it, where you're constantly hitting, you know, hammering home the anti-inflammatory properties, constantly calming the nervous system so throughout the day you know we don't get overly anxious or overly stressed you know if something someone cuts you off you're not you know you know motherfucking them you're just like okay you know you know take it personally just move on throughout your day you know i think um just, you just let things be you know what i mean because we can stress out about everything you look just you fire on the news for two seconds i mean you can induce stress in a matter of seconds so the idea is to shut that off Focus on yourself, calm the nervous system, but find that sweet spot with whatever product you're using. You yeah, know? absolutely. And listen, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you and I all keep in contact, obviously, um, you know, with the Puck Sport Foundation, Athletes for Care. I am uh, in contact with them quite a bit, actually, recently. I forget her name, the one I've been talking to, but, um, um, you know, I'm looking forward to building that relationship. And uh, I will, I'm going to connect with. Uh, with Josh Grad and a friend of yours, he's a new friend of mine. He's going to be on the podcast soon too. But um, he's relatively close. Well, he's closer to me than you are, and he is going to connect me with his guy um, tomorrow. He maybe already sent me the message while we were doing this, um, and uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to really try to fully invest in in this holistic approach the best that I can. Um, you know, and I will report back to, to you and the, the viewers on a whole. And like, the thing is, is like, I'm getting a lot of people listening that are, um, you know, struggling with mental health because a lot of people struggle with mental health. Um, a lot of people that are dealing with addiction. I had somebody, 
um, messaged me today about uh, their addiction to marijuana and that it was affecting their life because somebody was making them feel bad about it when in fact they shouldn't be making them feel bad about it because he's not using he's in the same situation as me not using hard drugs anymore and like whatever it's just you know what I mean so again it's you know, I think people should be less judgmental. I mean, that goes without saying, but I mean, you could, you, you could, you could sure, hear yeah. it in my voice. I'm asking you for like you to co-sign me that I'm that it's okay for me to smoke weed. You know what I mean? It's like because I have people going, "Oh, you shouldn't do it." So I'm like, "Hey, Riley's the guru. Hey, Riley, is it okay?" But you know, and you, I need even though I already know because I've I've done my own research and I know from my own personal experience of what it's doing for me, and that should be enough. But it's not sometimes. It doesn't feel yeah. like it is sometimes. And that's the problem with our society. And, and you know, again, I'm slowly, as I'm getting older, I think it just happens with age. You, you start to get less judgmental and you start to care less about what others think about you. However, it's still always there. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, this is something I'm going to embark on. And I want to say thank you because you are the one that has um, sparked my interest and given me the actual... Uh, push to do it like I've heard about it whatever and I'm like yeah I'll do it one day I want to do it but now I'm like hey I'm doing this and it's like on my agenda and it's happening soon you know what I mean and then not just it's not just the smoking cannabis and the microdosing like I understand that now it's not just about doing the substances like you said it's about respect and it's about balancing your life so i need to start working out again and eating properly like i i don't know what that proper diet looks like for me right now but like i'm gonna continue to do my research and whether it's a vegan or a keto diet i have no idea i've been I've, there's so much information out there but i know my diet right now is not good and i'm not feeling good I'm, i feel tense i feel stressed i feel my hips are sore all the time. Like I just, I need to do something. So this is a start. Um, and you've really, really influenced me. And I want to say thank you. Um, and thank you so much just for the support and for, you know, answering my texts, my calls, whatever. And, and of course, coming on the podcast, but we will connect uh, for another episode, whether a month or two, so that we can come back. I'd like to talk to you about it so people can hear uh, my experience of it. And, and we can, yeah. you know, and we could talk about it some more. But, um, you know, definitely, um, you know, guys, I will, um, I'm revamping my website, actually. Um, it should be, I do everything on my own. I do my own website, my own editing for the podcast, everything. So it takes time. But a um, couple of days, I'm, I'm launching a new website. It's way nicer than the one I have now um, with all the proper social media links for all my guests and everything. Like I have it all written. I just have to post it. So once that's done in the next couple of days, if you guys are listening, I'll have links to all of Riley's YouTube videos I'm talking about, all of the, the articles that I've read. I'm not kidding. I will have, um, of course, all his companies and links to the foundations and all of that. I'll make sure it's all in there um, for everybody. But just give me a couple of days to get my new website up and going, and I promise it'll all be in there, and I probably will have a page <laughs> in the near future dedicated to just this if you know i can already see that it's you know and i quote josh Grattan said to me about an hour before we record this he goes you're you're gonna do that it's a game changer that's what he said so uh um yeah i'm excited but listen coach i really appreciate you uh taking the time to do this and uh sharing your your <laughs> intelligence and your knowledge um and thank you for you know spending the last decade learning about this so that you could share it with guys like me because i truly appreciate it Anytime. Look forward to reconnecting. Okay, buddy. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Take care, man. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Mm, that's episode 32 of Hockey to Heroin, The Road to Recovery. A little different episode, that one, wasn't it? Um, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. I uh, really enjoy Anytime I get a chance to talk to Riley Cote, he is somebody that I really look to um, as an example. Um, the way he lives his life, um, just the way he talks, the way he carries himself. Uh, you guys get a chance, check him out on YouTube, some of his videos and things he's doing. He's extremely powerful. He's just very calm, you know, he just, I trust him. Like I've never met him face to face, but I have full trust in him, just like I do with Darren McCarty. Um, but you know, I, I really, really trust Riley Cote. Like, you know, you can hear that he's passionate about it. He cares about it um, and that it's worked for him and that he wants it to work for others, you know, and that to me, um, 
is just great. He's just such a great, great, kind soul. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of funny because he used to knock guys out for a living. Um, but man, am I ever grateful to have him in my life along with all these other great people. Um, so guys, I'm going to do some microdosing of uh, psilocybin. I'm going to dial back my cannabis intake. I'll let you guys know how that's going. Um, I want to first off say to you, I just want to um, remind everybody that I don't encourage um, you know, kids to be doing this stuff or anything if you're listening. Um, I am learning to do things the right way. It's taken me longer than I had hoped. I'm almost 33. Um, but now I'm really trying to make all the right choices. Um, and that includes with my medicines and, you know, I, yes, I smoke pot and it's been helping me stay off the hard drugs, but I recognize that I'm not respecting it and not using it properly. So, um, you know, and thanks to Riley for opening my eyes to that, um, you know, and my exercise, everything and just being mindful. Um, so guys, I'll, uh, let you know how the progress goes, how it works for me. If it doesn't work for me, I will, I'll come on here and tell you that I hated it. Um, if I loved it, I'll tell you I loved it. If it didn't really do anything, I'll say it didn't really do anything. That's the one thing you guys can, uh, I can guarantee you guys is that I will come on here and speak the truth. Um, I have no reason to lie. Um, if I was going to lie about anything, it'd be about covering stuff up because I was ultra, ultra embarrassed of the things that I was doing and the things that I've done. But guess what? I'm not doing those things anymore. So guess what? That's my past. And I get to rewrite my future. My name is Brie Leibold. And my comeback will be greater than my setback. And guys, it's all about choices. So remember, have a great day if you so choose.